10, 9, 8. Go for main engine start. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Okay, I'm actually going to skip ahead while this uh, engine mount is still drying. We're going to go to the fin units, and they're showing to sand the fins uh, down, which we'll do. That's going to close the grain up, make it a little smoother. And uh, I leave them in the frame when I do this. It's the easiest way to do it and keep it flat. If you take them out and try to sand it, sometimes you can rock over the edge and you can actually mess up the edges. So we will grab our fins here. And I'm just going to take a... First we're going to start with a 220 piece of sandpaper. I don't need a big piece here. And uh, just make 220, make sure I know which one it is. And I'm just going to gently sand in circular motion the fin. And this will knock down the roughness that has been milled into the balsa. And this sandpaper, unfortunately, you can try to wash it, but it generally when it's those uh, grits are full of material, you need to throw it away. Some of the washable sandpaper works pretty good, but you just don't want to wash sand the fins while the, the uh, sandpaper is wet because you're going to warp the fins. Balsa is pretty susceptible to warpage with water. You can actually form it like that. You can get balsa wet, form it into a shape, and then uh, let it dry and it'll stay in that shape. Just kind of neat. So we'll do both sides. And then what I'm going to do is, I'm once I'm done with this, I'm going to do a 400 grit sandpaper and sand that. And that'll sand these gouge marks out. And... Uh, then we'll be ready to actually seal these fins up. Okay, now I've got the uh, fins sanded down with the 400 grit sandpaper. The reason I don't go to 600 to polish it out is because when I put the sanding sealer on the coating to seal these uh, grain, I want it still to be a little bit rough so it'll get a little bit of grip. And now what I'm going to do, since the sanding dust is going to get be a problem with when I put the sanding coats on, I'm going to take some canned air and I'm going to blow out the grain of the fin. And this will just make sure that that dust doesn't adhere to the sealer and the sealer will just fall off. Plus it cleans everything up, makes everything a little nicer to, to handle and deal with. Okay. So now those are ready to actually come out of their frets, as they call it, or frame, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to cut these attachment points. Now i got to be careful. If I accidentally cut into the fin, um, I need to repair it or uh, somehow stop that cut from spreading. It's going to affect the uh, strength of the actual fin. So just be careful with it when you're cutting these out. Don't rip them out with your hands generally it does not work. It can put a nick in there and then that will rip the fin when you're uh, in flight. Okay. So now we'll have all these fins. It's going to be real easy because this is a three fin unit. Okay. These are mighty th small fins, but they're mighty thick. <laughs> so anyway, so we're ready to pop them out. Just make sure they come out cleanly. Okay. I always save this if I ever have to make a new fin. I have the frame shape and I just can draw it on a new piece of balsa and then replace the fin. Or if I want to make it out of a different type of wood like basswood, I can do that as well. So, and it's good to have some spare pieces for working with. Boss isn't cheap anymore. Okay. 
So now I've got my fins. I'm going to line them up. They actually do go a certain direction. So these are pretty even because they're laser cut. It used to be when we had to cut them out by themselves, they're a pain. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take them and I'm going to take my 200 grit sandpaper, 220, get these as even as I can just by hand and I'm going to press them down, make sure they're, you can, I can feel that they're a little uneven. So anyway, I'm going to get them as close as possible and then I'm going to get a good grip on them. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just draw them across the sandpaper. And I usually like to just draw them in one direction because if you go back and forth, you can actually start wobbling them and they become irregular. Okay, now I should be getting that, those burn marks should be disappearing and I can see how flat it's getting and how even they're getting. You can see this one's not even, so I'll give it a few more drags. Okay, so now I will still gripping it, I'll flip it over and I will do the other sides. Make sure you're on a flat surface. You can tape down the sandpaper if you want to. Okay, so we're getting that even. Again, gripping it really tight. And we're going to do this side. Now this side, you got to be careful that you don't rock it because it's a small end. And it's easy to start doing this. So just take your time and just make sure they stay flat. Okay, so I'll give those a little bit of extra sand, get them perfectly flat, and they'll be ready to go to the next step. Okay, now that I've got them pretty smooth and I've got all those nibs off as well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to need to actually make the leading edge uh, rounded so that way it's a lot more aerodynamic and uh, usually not the trailing edge. I can do the trailing edge if I wanted it super slick but uh, we just have to remember which is the root edge that's going to actually go on the rocket itself. So what I'm going to do since I have made this mistake before I'm going to actually mark these with the root edge and so forth. So this is actually how they're going to fit on the rocket not like this this, this way they stick out the bottom and they can hit when it lands, so we want them like this, which is the design. So I'm going to put root edge marks on each of these. And the root edge is the edge that goes to the tube itself. Okay, so we got those marks. So now what I'm going to do to make this actually perfectly even of a angle because I don't want the angle to go up and down and up and down and wavy because then it just will give you issues. These being so thick, I, I definitely need to do this little trick. And what it is, I take a, a green marker and I will just take the green marker and I'll mark this wood on the outside edge green. And I don't need to have it soak in too much, just enough that I can see the color. So. What this does is when I go to sand it and I start sanding this edge, I want basically it 45 degrees to begin with and meet in the middle. So what I do is I sand this, get you a little tighter picture here. Okay, so I'm going to sand this and you can see that it starts to get rid of that green line. But when I come from the other side, you can see that it's going to start narrowing that green. All that green is going to be gone. But what I want is a little fine green line that's right down the middle. And if it's, I start to sand off and the line goes up or down, since I can see it, I can actually change it as I'm sanding. So that way I can get a perfectly straight line and it'll be a perfectly lined up fin. So I'm going to mark all the fins that way, sand them, and they'll be uh, ready to go. Okay, you can now see, hopefully, that little green line, which is fairly in the middle, all the way down there. And once I get that correctly in, in place, then I can actually round the edge 
it's basically at about a 45 degree wedge but I can soften it I can just gently go around you don't need much but just going around like that and that will give you a rounded edge like that I'll do the rest of the fins and we'll be set to go okay got my fins done and they should look like that so we've got a curve on the leading edge you can see the edge is there so that's going to make it a little bit more aerodynamic or a lot, lot more aerodynamic actually and uh, make it work a lot better make it go a lot higher okay I'm ready to seal the fins and what I like to seal the grain with uh, basically what it does is it keeps paint from soaking in uh, plus it makes this the air smooth and strengthens it because it makes a plastic coating on it but what I like to use a sanding sealer it's a couple different ones that uh, you can use this stuff here it's not bad it actually if you don't have a place that's ventilated uh, very well this uh, stuff here is water-based and smells a lot uh, less odor than uh, this stuff here uh, only problem is that you paint one side it starts to warp it a little bit being water-based you have to get it till it's almost dry to the touch flip it over to the other side which will warp it the other direction once that's almost dry you actually put them under um, something heavy with a little bit of uh, wax paper in between that way it presses them while they fully dry and keeps them straight it actually works well if you do that but this is my preferred stuff but it's nasty lacquer sanding sealer this will uh, knock you out you need a ventilated area to use it or use it outdoors use a respirator um, but it works real good it doesn't warp the fins and drives real fast so this is what we're going to use so what I'm going to do is find me a stir stick to stir this stuff up because there is an actual uh, filler in this stuff and I don't like to shake the cans because then you get the stuff on the lid and then you close the lid and then glues itself shut so anyways okay so you can see it's a little bit clear here and it's actually supposed to be white so we're going to stir it up and get that filler base moving throughout the whole can of uh, sanding sealer they used to make small bottles of this stuff I wish they still did because I hate opening this big can because it smells bad it's like fiberglass factory plus 10 so okay clean off the stick and then I'm going to use a foam brush to do this you can use a regular brush but foam brushes are throw away and you're going to want to throw these away because they're hard to clean and they're messy to clean so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take one fin on one side and I'm going to put some of the sanding sealer on there and it's going to soak in real fast on the first coat so you want to use a, a fairly liberal amount of it the second and third coats are going to be uh, on top of this plastic coat so they're not going to soak in as fast so you don't need to use as much so okay now one thing I do want to make sure I do is I don't want to hit the root edge if I do I'll just have to sand it off later but I do want to hit the trailing edge just a little bit so we'll move that aside to dry we'll do the rest of the fins then once it's dry I can flip it over to the other side once that's dry then I can actually sand and what I'm going to do is sand between the coats and we'll do just about three coats so we will get those uh, sealed okay while I'm working on the fins I can actually work on one other thing here while they're drying this is the nose cone and it's got a nose cone piece on the back here which is where we hook the rocket shock cord and the parachute and this little piece here has to be cut out I recommend not trying to cut it completely because you can make a nick and make this easy to break so these are usually thin enough that you can usually just actually you can see it there you can actually just punch them out just push it out it comes right out so try not to get any nicks in there and then the other thing I'm going to do is there is a mold line on these blow molded cones all the way down it and even in here and I'm going to sand that off just to make it super smooth so it looks better and it uh, is a little bit more aerodynamic these little marks right here these are actually the uh, to keep the 
nose cone in the tube tightly but not too tight so those are a great addition they used to not have those back in the day so i'm going to sand those or sand the um, mold lines off and then i'm also going to clean up this area here as much as i can so there's no sharp edges because if this starts twisting and it starts twisting on the lines of the parachute or the cord it can cut those so i'll sand those nice and smooth and just for good measure on this one, I'm going to put just a tiny bit of weight in the nose uh, to rebalance it. Um, just that way it flies a little bit better. Um, you can look at my other videos about CG. You want the center of gravity in front of the center of pressure. It'll fly better. If it's the other way around, the rocket will go crazy. So check that out. Um, but anyways, I'm going to get sanding those with my sanding stick. Course first and then flip it over and polish it out. Okay, I've got the uh, fins with the first coat of uh, sanding sealer on them. Now I can just sand that and sand it smooth. And it'll take off most of this material and keep a lot in the grain. But what I like to do is I like to use this, which is kind of a woodworker's trade tool. This is 4 out steel wool. And what this is going to do is it's going to knock down all these high points and rough parts and polish it out. And that'll still leave a lot of the uh, plastic coating on here. So, um, and then that'll make it smooth enough for the next coat. And so what I do is uh, it also doesn't leave as much dust, but it does leave metal fibers. The metal fibers tear off as they hit these points on the fin. So uh, you're going to get metal fibers. So be sure not to blow those around and breathe them in. Make sure to use a mask or a respirator when you're using this. And when you're done, you'll just wipe them off. Don't blow them around so you don't want these things in the air. So a little safety tip there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this and I'm just going to go in round circles and polish out that first coat of sanding sealer. And you'll be able to feel how super smooth it is. And you can kind of hear it. There's a difference there. So... What we'll do is it also changes color a little bit. You'll actually see it lighten up. And then after I'm done with uh, using this stuff, I will use my uh, compressed air can to blow the uh, particles out of the actual wood. I'll take it and I'll put it near the floor, somewhere near somewhere where I don't want, don't care, they go flying around and uh, blow it out. I'll put it here in the trash can and then give it a little shot and then this stuff the dust again I'm just gonna wipe it up you can see the, all the particles there and uh, like I said just maybe dip it in a little bit of water the towel and that way it'll grip it a little better and clean it off that way so Okay, so we'll finish all the sides, and then we'll put another coat of uh, sanding sealer on it. Okay, before I do the second coat of sanding sealer, there's actually something I decided to do <clears throat> that I did on one of my other rockets, which was the uh, High Flyer XL. And basically, when this comes down, even though this fin isn't very big, when this comes down, if it comes down on the fin itself, it can snap any area around here. Uh, the sanding sealer will make it a lot stronger, but it's still a point of contention of breakage. So what I did with the other one is I actually took this, which is a carbon fiber flat strip, and I actually glued it to the back part of the fin here, which makes kind of like a bumper. And what it'll do is it'll keep things from striking here and snapping it, and it'll also keep the flex this way rigid so it is uh, actually the thickness of the fin it's actually a little thick thinner than this right here so what i'm going to do is i'm going to cut a piece of that and i'm going to glue that actually right to it so the way i do that is i just take my piece and get it up to the front here and then I take a marker, and this is a green marker, I can actually see it on the black carbon fiber, and I'll mark where I want to cut it. Now a couple things with handling this, it's very, it can get very sharp, so be careful of it. 
Um, also, cutting it is kind of difficult because it's actually very strong, like steel. So what I'm going to use, I'm going to use a pair of cutters here, wire cutters. I'm going to get it where I want it, get it square, and then I'm going to crimp it. I don't want to snap it all the way, which is actually almost impossible, but I just want to put enough of a crimp in it that I can grab it with the pliers and then just snap it clean. So that's where its strength is. I mean, I couldn't, I could, I've tried, I, it's very hard to cut through this stuff. So anyway, so now I've got this piece here that is sized to that. Now to make the stick, this is actually a carbon fiber in a resin. So I found that it doesn't like to stick very well to things because the surface is so slick. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my real coarse sanding stick here and I'm going to roughen up the side that I'm actually going to glue. And you can see I'm actually sanding off some of that resin and getting down to some of the fibers there. So I'll make sure that's got some teeth to it. So I'll actually use, I'm going to try epoxy again. Last time I did epoxy didn't work very well, so I had to use super glue, but we'll try it again after roughing up. Then I'll take my coarse sanding stick and just kind of clean that up, get it, the pores open. I actually have some of that sanding sealer on there from the first coat, so I got to get rid of that. So now we're going to take the epoxy and put a little bit of it out here. Equal amounts. Small equal amounts. Again, don't touch each other's little pile with the uh, tip of the uh, epoxy because you'll contaminate it. So you want to keep that stuff separated. And we'll make sure we got equal amounts there. And we'll mix this up. Get it really, really good going there. And then I'm going to place some of the epoxy. Again, make sure it's on the right side of what we're doing. This stuff will soak in pretty quick, so we'll do one coat and then we'll do one coat over the top of that. The first coat will get into the get into the pores of the fin, and then we'll take and do another coat here. The reason I'm doing it now is I figure once I do the uh, other sanding sealers, I can actually paint the sanding sealer over the carbon fiber, which will actually seal it in. Or I can use some more epoxy or super glue. Okay, so we're going to take this and we're going to place the carbon fiber strip like that. I don't want it to overhang here so it interferes when I glue the fin to the rocket itself. And it's pretty slick so just be careful when you press on it to keep it in one place. Now we can put tape on it as well which actually I think I might do. It, the tape will actually get glued with the epoxy but I can sand that off. But this will keep it tight to the actual fin so we'll Tighten it like that. Make sure it's pressed good. Make sure it's straight. Do another piece. And then uh, the, the way I did it last time is I actually did super glue on the edge and then sanded that down to seal it in. Okay. So now we've got our little bumper there. If we want to make sure that it's not overhanging, we can check it and uh, looks good. So we'll do that to all the fins and hopefully we'll have some uh, reinforcement there on those fins.
Okay, I'm ready to install the motor mount into the main body tube, the one that's marked with the uh, lug lines and the fin lines here. It's the back of it there. And they need you to put the glue in at two inches, the smear of glue. So I'm going to take this from the rear. Okay, so now we've got the two inch line there. And I'm gonna grab another one of my cuticle sticks here to place the glue in the actual tube. So I'm going to grab my tight bond. Okay, get it ready. Now, this one I want a pretty big smear of glue, not to the point where it drips, but a little bigger than the motor mount just because it's going to need to be a, a, quite a bit of a strength area. So what they are asking you to do is put the glue at two inches in and then slide in the motor mount and have it flush with the bottom of the rocket. So let's take the glue. We're going to take our stick and we're going to measure the two inch mark here, which is pretty close to the end, so this is going to be much easier. You can almost do it with your finger, but might as well do it right. Okay, so we're just going to take the glue and again go to that mark and start putting in a bunch of it right where I want it. Okay. And we're going to go in and do some fillets on the pieces here too, just to be sure. Okay, so we got lots of glue in that area. Okay, two inches. Now we're going to take this, and since we put in a lot, it should actually shove in there pretty smoothly. But just keep the pressure on it. Now make sure it's going the right direction. This is the back of the rocket, that's the front of the tube. And we'll push it in into the glue. And then we're just going to tip the tube over and push it against the table and that's going to make it flush. So we'll let it set there like that. And then we're going to put a fillet in there once that's at least uh, set up.